All right, here we are. It's time. It's Halloween time, right. ends. Welcome to the review, the retrospective, the whatever you want to call it at this point because it's been a weekend yeah. since this movie has come out. I am Zachary uh, Michael Hill. <laughs> And this is Brooke Corey Hilton. That not saying that's me to that. Brooke Allison Hilton. Still not saying me to that. And that's Brooke. That's me. That's her. Yep. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> that's you. Okay. So maybe if you had said strode. Oh, you strode it all the way, <laughs> baby. All right. So here's the deal. Mm -hmm. It is Sunday. We're recording this on a Sunday. So yeah. between if you saw this in theater, mm -hmm. if you saw this on Peacock, okay, Halloween Ends has hit the theater. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do like a slight non-spoiler of overall feeling and then go into spoiler? Yeah, I think I like what that. we need to do is a brief before mm -hmm. and then it's going to go spoiler territory. For sure. And you and I are just going to drop thoughts. So, okay. let's do non-spoiler in case of the person that's watching this, which wow, okay. Um, well, maybe they, they want, you know, should I, should I? Should I not. or should I not? <laughs> I, like the, I like mine. Should I or should I? <laughs> should I or should I? Okay. So we'll start with you. Non-spoiler, mm -hmm. what did you think of this film, Halloween Ends? I think that it is a different take in a sense of something that you're not necessarily prepared for. Yeah. But if you take a step back, you realize that you were prepared for it like they did prepare you it you just weren't ready for it in a sense right um kind of feel i do think that if you go in i would highly recommend making sure that you watch all the previous movies and by previous she means halloween 78 mm -hmm. halloween 2018 and halloween kills, kills. yeah that's all you need for yep. this and so I would watch those just to kind of get that better understanding right. um, and just know that you're in for a ride. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis knocks it out of the park. Right. Um, for me, I have not been silent on social media or even talking to friends. Mm -hmm. I love this film. Yeah. I am a massive Halloween fan. That's I am like top notch. This is my horror slasher guy. Yeah. There's people that love Friday the 13th. There's people that love Saw, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. Halloween is my Jimmy Jam. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think I have a lot writing into this film. Yeah. It is. I think you're, you are also very critical going in. Yeah, well, there's a lot on the line. Like, yeah. I even told you before we went in, I was like, this is it. Yeah. Like, this is the only part of this franchise that's ever been like, this is the end. You look at Nightmare on Elm Street, they had Freddy's end. Yeah. If you look at Jason, they had Jason Goes to Hell, The Final yeah. Friday. This is the only movie in Halloween that's actually put out there. This, this is, is it. it. Yeah. And because of that, there's a lot of like nostalgia and wants needs and everything like that going into the film. And I'll be quite honest, what I got from top to bottom was not what I was expecting. And because of that, I applaud this film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is so well done. Yeah. David Gordon Green, director, co-writer, literally tells the story from the beginning of his trilogy, which is 2018. And I think he wrote it out. I think, Oh yeah. I think honest to God, they, I think they did have something. to do some COVID. changes because of COVID, yeah. but I yeah, think yeah. he knew very well where he was going with it. And maybe I'm the only guy that says this. I think the COVID problems actually helped the film. And it, it, in all honesty, before we even go into spoiler yeah. review, um, we have now seen it twice. We watched Dose. it in theater um, and, and then at home. and at home on Peacock. Right. Um, and <laughs> plug for Peacock. Thanks. Use peacock.com backslash Hunter's Podcast for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, but no, like one of my, to me, which makes this film truly stand out. Yeah. Is the amount of conversations that we have had for this movie. Like right. we just keep kind of reflecting and going back and like, oh, remember this? Oh, remember this? Or what do you think about this? Mm. And like talking through it, like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. And for me, if you can have that in a film, it it's done its job. It's it hits it. It hits it, it hits it, it hits it. So I, I, I'm all for it. Please see it, please see it, please see it. I want to piggyback on the fact of when we watched Kills. Mm -hmm. I remember liking Kills. Yeah. And being like, man, that was a fun movie. I might watch it again yeah. sooner or later. But it definitely to rewatch for the trilogy. But yeah. I never left that film being like, I need, to, well, what about this? What about that? What about right, the other thing? Right, right. The conversation wasn't there because it was a slasher film. Immediately, we are like 72 plus hours past mm -hmm. this movie and you and I have had conversations. I have talked to fellow Throw Me Podcast Network members, Josh, Rob, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've talked to them about this movie mm -hmm. and like that has been something like even honest God, um, Justin from improper guidance, his wife, Leanne watched mm -hmm. it. I was so fearful yeah. that she was going to come back being like, I didn't like that movie. And she came in like, Oh, I love that. Yeah. And it's wild to me that I know so many people mm -hmm. that like this movie. And yes, it has a rotten score in uh, rotten tomatoes even the audience score. And I think what, and we're about to get into spoilers mm -hmm. right now, what I think that comes to is the general public that we live in now is so abrasive, if that's a word. Um, it is. <laughs> and very aggressive yeah. about how bad something is without sitting back and being like, there's what no, was I being told? There there was, I felt like, okay, so <clears throat> here's what I will say. Watching the movie, I had like this level of knowing watching it that people were not going to like it. Right. You said that. I did. I was you like, people are not going to like this movie. And I said it, go leave it. I was like, oh my God, how mad are people going yeah. to be? Which I Which understood. Which Jamie Lee it. Curtis even said. People are going to be angry because of this film. Yes. And I think that it boils down to it being like not the quote unquote slasher film that you want your Michael to be. Mm -hmm. It was the end of a story. Yes. And it gave you an ending that no matter how much you want to fight it, you knew that it needed to be. Okay. So, let's get into the plot. Okay. The plot of the movie is, and this is spoilers from here on yeah. out, so we're just going to go deep. If you haven't seen it, stop it. We both say go yeah, see it. go see it. But. I'll but, even say, like, see, see it at home. That's fine, too. I definitely think it's uh, theater worthy. But oh, yeah. Um, if you see it at home, by all means, I the only thing that I would strongly suggest, and this is actually something that we've talked about before, that if you are going to see something at home, mm. put your phone away just like you would in a movie theater because I feel like that can definitely distract you and mm -hmm. take you out of living the moment of that movie. A couple of things. There's bits in the movie that are very, like, if you're on your phone just playing around and then you watch the movie, you're going to miss. Yeah. The, and I'm going to speak of these moments because yeah. they're very integral moments for me. Uh -huh. But on top of that, I'll say this. It's a theater-worthy movie. Yes. 100%. And 100%. this is why. I've watched both versions, theater and uh, Peacock. Mm -hmm. The sound. Yes. The sound alone. The Dolby sound that you get Ooh. in theater it, it's jump scare central. Yeah. So you may miss those bits. It's still a great movie yes. on video. But like if you want that like horror theater crowd, mm -hmm. this is the way to do it. Yeah. All right. So Spoiler. plot of the movie really quickly. This is what it is. Spoilers ahead. The plot of the movie is there is a cat named Corey Cunningham 
who not is not an actual cat. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, come here. Come here. Eat your friskies. Is that what it's called? Fiskers? Friskies? Whatever. Um, Corey is... Ba- this is the way the movie begins. He's babysitting a child, and the child is playing a prank on him, and that child becomes killed via Corey's hands um, inadvertently. We'll yeah, say that. An, an accident. Um, it is an accident, and because of that, the town looks at Corey as a killer from mm-hmm. there on out, even though he's been cleared mm-hmm. of the charges. Mm-hmm. And through those moments, and we get Lori, who is trying to move Vaughn. on with her life. Yep, she's, and she's bought a house. Right, with bought a house with know. Allison. Mm-hmm. She's writing a book to give her memories, to say goodbye to everything of the past so mm-hmm. she can finally move on. on. And during this, Corey has met Allison, and there's this connection, a, a wild connection between them both that... They start hitting it off. And Mm -hmm. during this process, Corey's been picked on and he's been teased and he's been bullied. And during that, he has met Michael Myers. I'm not going to say why, but he has met Michael Myers. And for some reason, this connection between not only him and Allison, but now he has a connection between Michael and himself Uh that is drawing him to a different side. And eventually, Lori has seen this. He looks... Like she looks at his eyes and can see the darkness that she's only seen once before, and that's Michael's. Mm -hmm. And because of this, she doesn't want Allison to be around Corey, and it just gets all kinds of fucking wild from there. Corey is becoming more of a monster. Michael is unleashed, and then by the end, we get Michael and Lori's final duel, if you Mm -hmm. will. And all shit the goes down. The end of down. their love story. That's right. The saga ends as the promotion has said. Mm-hmm. So, that's the plot of the movie. Here we go. I want to start with negatives because obviously we're good with this movie. Mm-hmm. What are the negatives in your mind of it? Um, I think that it it's hard because I feel like the negative is also something positive. Mm-hmm. Or it's more of the sense of like... After we have talked about it, like I've understood it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I will say my negative initially was the entire Corey character. Like, why is he Michael? Why is he, like, able to take Michael's mask? Why? Like, all of these things that just did not necessarily make sense to me right away. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is where I say, like, I could, I felt like I could have easily walked out of that movie and been like, I wasn't a fan. Because mm-hmm. obviously Corey is the main... He is a central yeah. character. Yeah. Like, a lot of complaints that you'll see on Twitter is, we get this third movie and we're introduced to a character that ends up being the co-lead. Yeah. Besides Allison, Lori. It's Allison, Lori, Corey. Yeah. So I was very like, what in the world? And I will say that like, we started talking about it Mm -hmm. and I, it was almost like I wasn't necessarily asking questions, but like, what did you think? Like, it was weird that he was able to get the mask, but then it seemed like, like there was this ultimate power, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we like started talking about it and like, it seemed as if Michael gets power from killing. Right. And it seemed like in that moment with Corey, when they saw eye to eye, that it was the the life flash before of, of evil. You even said it. You said, I see you. Yeah. Game it was sees like, game. Yes. Game sees game. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's really right. funny because again, this is, this is why we are still talking about this movie because mm-hmm. I just had that I thought. Lori introduced Corey to, to Allison, Allison. Yes. And did not see that evil. Right. Saw a very misunderstood, a, a, a bullied child, in a yep. sense, for something he had no control over, right? But after meeting Michael is when she no longer saw Corey. Right. She saw that blank 
stare that Michael, that evil. He went to the darkness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like he crossed over. And it's crazy because like when we had that conversation is when I took a step back and I was like, okay. Okay. Right. And then it was like the floodgates of conversations just transpired. Like we we literally could not stop. Yeah. So my negative. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my I told negative. You it was going to turn into a positive, but it was my yes, negative. It did. It went from. And an, I think it was a and very I think valid. It was, it's what we went back and yes. forth on, and I think it does turn like we'll get to that yeah. in a second. But you're absolutely right. That's what this movie did was invoke conversation, conversation. Mm-hmm. to be like, "Wow, this is what it's doing. This is what it's doing." I feel like, and before I get into my negatives, I feel like this is exactly what Halloween, the season of the witch did Mm -hmm. for people who saw it in theater and being like, no, you got to understand this is a, this is a wildly good movie because of this, this, and this. And I feel like what this movie did was I'm going to blend those thoughts while putting it still in the same universe as Michael. Well, you even said like, again, this is where he is very much like, the oh fan, God, baby. I'm the, this is, he he this is, is a fan. Shame. Okay, Molly, I've got my ears. This is my too. Gem. Okay, oh, but you got my ears. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I am my. We're this. watching the movie, <laughs> and he and I mean immediately with from the, the get from was the, like <gasps> Halloween three blah blah blah. And I was like, yeah. What are so you talking the, about? the credits yeah. were Halloween three credits, and I immediately fucking lost it mm-hmm. because by guys. Halloween 3 is not Mm -hmm. one one of my favorites. It's, and I don't mean this, it's not in my top tier of Mm -hmm. Halloween, but Mm -hmm. I do respect it and I do watch it. I Mm -hmm. actually watched it a lot this year. Yeah. But once I saw that fucking logo come up with, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So what did you say your negative was? My negative (laughs) is the dialogue. Okay, there are yeah. bits there, mm-hmm. of the dialogue that I feel very clunky. Some I do love just because it does come off very like, yeah, grandma would be the. There's a scene with Lori where she's just like, whip your tits and fuck ye. And I'm like, <laughs> that's a lot. But I feel you because you're a grandmother. But there's one line of dialogue doesn't take me out of the movie. But I was like, that's a line a person says in a movie, not in, in real, real life. life. And what it is, is blah, blah died. And, or, ha, yeah, like, where's blah, blah? Oh, she's dead. And then that person looking up sees a character over and goes, you're dead too. That's not a thing someone would say right. in real life, no matter what. Yeah. Like, that is the, like, that person goes, Bubba, look out! Like, yeah. that's what you say. You don't go, been like, you're run. dead too. Yeah. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck are you talking about? Right. Only line of dialogue that I don't like be being said, I feel this franchise is wild with dialogue. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking, I got peanut butter on my penis. Like, that's what this franchise whole franchise has you. been about. <laughs> like, I just feel like I could just have these lines of dialogue down on shirts. Shirt. Yeah. That's all I can I have. just want a combination. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got peanut butter on my penis back. You're dead, too. Um, so, dialogue-wise, not a fan of. Um, there are some, like, one line, and I can't quote it because it's, it's a longer so quote. So fresh as well. Yeah, but the one where Lori is talking to Michael and she's like, I feared you. I, you know, goes down the list. Yeah. And it's like, to me, that line was the epitome of the franchise. Yes, you're absolutely right. Like as much as I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't like this. I do like that. She speaks wildly to say this. She speaks her truth to Michael. Yes. And yeah. that's fucking exactly. That's her truth. Right. That's her truth. <laughs> and the truth was said. The truth was As like, well as his. Right. Peanut butter was on his penis. Mm, that so, wasn't Michael though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk some goods. Okay. What are your favorite parts about this movie? That's such a loaded question. I, again, my favorite part is the conversation. I mm-hmm. cannot get enough of talking about this movie. Okay. I feel like, okay, not to, 
I feel like I have said some like really fantastic things of like realizations yeah. <laughs> with the movie, and yeah. I cannot for the life of me remember, remember any one of them, of them right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but just thinking about how it's about trauma, like that whole mm-hmm. trauma conversation, the whole saga, the, the whole, and it's so funny because like there's the you know there's the whole meme with. Jamie Lee Curtis that anytime she's talking about it, she's talking about trauma. She's talking about trauma. She's talking about trauma. She's like, it's all about trauma. She's like, I'm not going to talk about it no more, you fuck. Right. Well, because <laughs> yeah. it's over. It ends. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is such a, the level of like smartness yeah. with it. Yeah. It blows me away because yeah. I do feel like it is truly how people would react. Mm hmm. In a sense, Mm -hmm. like even to the point when, you know, Lori is trying to get her life back and she's in the grocery store and you can tell that she hasn't like she's still a child. Well, she reverted back. Yeah. Like being that person pre trauma. Yes. Like playing with her hair and being like giddy in a silly school girl (laughs) type way. And I just thought that that was brilliant because Mm -hmm. She's trying to get over. She's and trying to become Lori Strode. Yes. And she walks out and immediately it is hit. immediately attacked for like, you can't be happy. Right. You did this. You my, did this to my sister. Yes. And it's like the the blame mm-hmm. of it being Michael. Right. The town neglected. Yeah. And the town has settled on yeah. this entire time because at the beginning of the movie, we see all these deaths. We see two mm-hmm. people killed in a Jeep. We and see, like, see someone yeah. hung. And, that and everybody's and like, everything. do you think Michael's back? And it's like, Michael doesn't use a gun. Right. And it's like, we're always going mm-hmm. to try to find a different villain mm-hmm. than what it truly is. Right. This but fucking wanted... movie has so many messages. But see, that's where it goes back to what Lori said about... It's Michael is not a person. Mm-hmm. Michael is evil. So with mm. them wanting to blame, like this is what's crazy to me, with the town wanting to blame everything on Michael. Right. Yeah, you're right. It was evil. Right. It wasn't this, you know, entity. Right. But you wanted to have essentially like an escape goat. Right. And everything was that route. Right. And I just love, love, love love that process Mm -hmm. even where you know that end scene where Lori is devastated because she now feels like she has lost her granddaughter because she went toe-to-toe with Corey right and she is like devastated and crying and it it's like it all hit her that no matter what she was doing to overcome her past and move on and buy a house and I'm writing a book and I'm talking about it and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to get it out. It wasn't resolved. Right. And so she felt all that pain. Right. And was crying. And then we have, she realizes before she hears it, anything that Michael's in the house right. and it was like the, I'm done. I'm done. I'm right. done. You are no longer controlling or dictating how I'm living my life and I'm finishing this and I adore that yeah I actually think my favorite part about this movie and the entire David Gordon Green run Mm -hmm. has been that it is a love letter Mm -hmm. to John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's mission statement of this franchise the fact that it was about a boogeyman, mm-hmm. no reason to kill. Like you don't know anything about him, mm-hmm. and you will you never don't need know. To. And what they wanted with the franchise wasn't about. We saw a TikTok, so I got to give this credit. And I forget her name. I'm so sorry, but the the whole idea was to make a Tales from the Crypt anthology, right? And. I love the fact that David Gordon Green was smart enough to not only homage Halloween season of the witch of being the the outcast. Right. 
but smart enough to be like, no, I, I'm going to include Michael in this, but I'm going to create my new serial killer. Mm -hmm. And because of that, not only can you look at this guy and be like, I wonder if this is why Michael lost it. Yeah. Because I've said this again, it's a fucking love letter from 78 on. Mm -hmm. And it becomes like, oh, in 78, when Michael's watching Tommy Do Doyle being bullied by these kids and he's watching on, is that what happened to Michael? Who knows? But in this movie, we see Corey being bullied. Yeah. And then he snaps mm -hmm. and becomes a fucking killer yeah. and goes after those kids. So, like, it is a bunch of questions that happen. And then my, oh, ooh, cherry. Because if you know this show, my first Halloween in theater was Curse of Michael Myers, where they tried to explain this mythological whole answer. And, like, because of that, I've always had this, like, background of, like, what's the mythological reason of Michael Myers? Yeah. This trilogy of new movies included in. when you see him stab that cop. And he backs up and he does the little shakies and then starts stabbing again. But then he still looks frail. And after he's done killing, he becomes this like yeah. monster that fucking has awoken. Yeah. But guess what? We never get the explanation. And we don't need it. So my number one favorite thing about this, we do not explain mm -hmm. why the Jaws, the, the shark from Jaws is killing so many people. Yeah. And that's all I needed out of that. Yeah. And here's what I will say to kind of piggyback, because this is also something that we talked about, and it was like one of those like aha type moments, uh -huh. is the fact that this does do a really good job of all of the homage and all of the like yeah. bringing back characters yep. and kind of giving that to you in a sense. Yeah. However, this has never... And I don't think ever intended to be like that fan. Fan. Oh yes. Like um, that. What is it? The fan. Uh, fan service. Yes, fan service. This like, movie it, wasn't the fan service. That's not. That's not what this was about. Yes. It's story service. It's yes. It gives you a story. Yep. It really does. It does. And to me, it didn't. That's what it needed to do. You're right. It needed to give you the story. Yeah. It needed to give you how Haddonfield dealt. lived and right. dealt with all of this. I mean, it, just phenomenal. Will this movie have its haters? Absolutely. Will this movie go on and people critique it because Michael wasn't in a lot of it and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Out 1,000%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But there is an interesting thing that I've seen. And as a huge, huge Big Halloween Lee. fan, bigly, unbelievably, okay. big I I, Halloween I fan. That. You should never. I mean, I grabbed them by okay. the, I grabbed them by the knife. Mm. Um, but I look at someone like Nick Push, friend of the show, yeah. who is his entire channel is devoted to, mm -hmm. and then that TikTok person that is big, like we they all as Halloween fans have liked this movie. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because as true Halloween fans, we accept what we got. And I said this, I forget to who, but I said, I have 12 movies that I can watch of Michael Myers yeah. going to town. I love the fact that I got a new killer, mm -hmm. Corey Cunningham, and I got to watch his origin tale while also looking at it and being like, is this what Michael did? Is this what, is it, it granted younger, but is this what drove him wild between his sister? And, and I saw this as a tweet, like, oh, we should apologize for Rob Zombie's Halloween. Like everybody should apologize because he literally, I mean, like this hints Rob Zombie's Halloween went full blown. He was a broken home member. This is why he went crazy. Mm -hmm. And then we lived the tale. You're right. And that's what this movie does. It homages 
the entire franchise from the cult stuff with the shakies, from the broken home mm-hmm. with Corey, and with the music for Rob Zombies. Like, this entire goddamn thing loved the franchise right. of Halloween. Right. And there's just so mm. many little details throughout it of, like, when Corey was killing, that it was a different... The theme. Theme The theme song, song was like, Corey's it was, theme. It was close, but different, right? Yes. Like, they purposefully gave Corey's yes. theme yes. an add-on. And just little things like that right. give it, like, that extra, like, yes. Yeah. Thank you. A hundred percent. Um... Can we just, with Corey, honestly, thinking about it, like, in a, this is something we haven't even talked about, so I'm sorry. No, please. Um, the way he played that character mm-hmm. was brilliant because mm-hmm. you did see, I mean, from his, one of his big opening lines of like, it's Halloween. We're going to have a good night. We're going to have or a good a night. night. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see like this, kind of teenager right like you see a teenager you even see that you know he didn't follow the rules and he's letting the kid watch you know things he shouldn't be staying up late blah 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 blah. and then the whole incident happened and even then you still you just see like this like broken kid right and you see the taunting and then he finds allison and it seems like he can live again. Right. Like, he can breathe again. Right. And then he is pulled right back into that trauma. Yeah. By the mom. And then he meets Michael. And you can honestly, this is mm-hmm. where I'm saying, like, you can <gasps> see the the transition yeah. in him. Like, you can tell needing... there's multiple people going yes. on. The dark side, light side. Because... Allison, he he messaged or voicemailed Allison being like, meet me at nine o'clock. And yes. He, he didn't show up. Nope. And he doesn't show up because that dark side took over. Mm-hmm. And the, the people evil. that he kills in that movie is for him, for Allison, and moving forward. Yes. And they even say in it, it's like, oh, we got to burn this town down. Yeah. His whole goal was to kill Haddonfield. I mean, he was. He burned down, like, the... The, the radio station. Yeah. Like, Rowan, there's just so... Rowan Campbell is the kid who played Corey oh, Cunningham. Okay. And let me tell you, I love his portrayal. Like... I've never been more attached to a newcomer. He was in the Virgin uh, River. I don't know if you've ever seen Virgin River. He's in uh, episodes of Virgin River. Um, But I, for this being my first time experience with him, I absolutely adored this kid because this is the one thing that he did for me. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was watching Michael Myers. Yeah. yeah. I felt like That's I was I mean. watching. Like, I, I'm saying, without a mask. I feel like I'm watching 78 Michael Myers. Like the thought process. For his, yeah, because like when the movie begins in 2019, he's 21. Michael right. Myers kills in 78 at 21. So at this point, it's 22. So he's 24, 23, 24. Yeah, yeah. That's Michael's age for that movie. Yeah. And this entire time, I was like, just put the mask on him. And it's that body yeah. type. It's the same slender look and all that. I mean, even and then the- once he becomes, he literally goes in. Okay. We didn't say how it happens. He eventually meets Michael and it becomes like a like co-parenting. Like, right. like he's Tag teaching team. him. Because he even <laughs> asks. He asks. He says, show, hey, me, what show me how to mm-hmm. do this. And he does it. But like then they start tag teaming fuckers mm-hmm. and you can see and once he decides I'm going on my own, he takes Michael's mask mm-hmm. and he goes on his own. He's mimicking exactly how Michael looks from the in 78. To, from the se- uh, yeah. And that's what I absolutely love is like because those are the questions. It's the questions of like. Is the power being transcended? Right. Is this a Which, something that happens to this town because? Right. Oh my There's God, just so I fucking much. love this movie. <laughs> I can't gush about it more. I know. I and know. I'll be honest, 
we're in 2022. I don't think I've talked about a movie more. Right. Like, I feel like I'm uh, Justin and Leanne with Top Gun. This is the most I've talked about a movie all year. 100%. All year. 100%. And it's always, I feel like every time we do talk about it, we bring up something new. We find something. Yeah. That we're just That's like, what, what I was just saying. Like, we, we haven't talked about, about Corey in yes. the sense of his acting. And yes. it's just there. I, again, cannot say enough. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else you have on. You know, you had some bullet points. I do yeah, want to yeah, bring yeah. up I feel the like end. Lord, we got, I think that's the wrap up of okay. this conversation. So the end is Corey suicides. Yeah. And uh, tries to make Lori look like a bad person to Allison. Allison, Allison eventually runs away. Because he was pretty away. much like, if then, I can't have her, you can. Right. And then. Like no one will. Allison herself figures it out later on that this is all bullshit but Lori is in her home and michael michael gets his mask then kills Corey because Corey tries to like grab him yeah like and i felt like that was more of a like no help me get me out of this situation and he's like go fuck yourself dead and then you took my mask right and then Lori's seeing all this but Lori walks in the kitchen and then michael's like um well hello motherfucker (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then we get the final battle between Lori and the shape. Mm-hmm. And what a battle it is. I don't care what anybody says. This fucking fight within just one room oh. says enough. And just to give my thoughts, we'll get yours. It is such a heart wrenching fight because I truly watching it didn't know what would happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. The entire run of this, I not for once thought Lori would live. Yeah. And to be that final girl. Yes. Because like, you got to understand as a guy that's watched this film, like she's lived, but then she's died 15 minutes into Mm -hmm. a movie. And I never took in the account of like, I don't want to be in this franchise anymore. Kill me. But like, I did think, oh, send her off into the sunset Mm -hmm. cowboy style. Yeah. But I more love what we got because, because, and I'm going to say this, and if you hate it, internet, that's on you. Lori Strode is the final girl. No, she is. You can't, you cannot tell me. Fuck your dev. The, here's the thing. Nancy. Here's the thing. The evolution of Laurie Strode is phenomenal. Yes. Phenomenal. Because it's a natural character. Yes. The arc. Growth and arc. mm -hmm. The arc is there like no tomorrow. To the Mm -hmm. point where I did not like Laurie Strode in the original movie. You didn't. You can go back to old SoundCloud clips of where my wife drove her into the ground. Because I was like. Oh, do something. Right. Like, stop running. Stop screaming. Yes. Like, right. be be better. <laughs> be better, Lori. <laughs> and I feel like yeah. this was such a natural progression of, I hate to say the word again, of the trauma that she went through. Mm-hmm. It really was. Mm-hmm. And it went from that, like, you know, all the different levels that you go through of the steps, essentially, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you go through from trauma. Right. And she went through those things. And the fact that she came out on top in the sense of that she overcame it and something that, like, I mean, she set up a house. She not only from warned, but trained, like, trained her to daughter yep. to fight mm-hmm. and lost that battle of a relationship with her daughter and even just to make sure she was okay yes yep and after all of that after everything setting up she still lost her daughter right right at the point when her daughter finally believed her right and having to go through i mean it gives me goosebumps yeah of that she went through all of these things Mm -hmm. and it's crazy because you know we talked about it a little bit where the town even banished Lori in a sense of being like, this is your fault. You did this. You provoked him. Mm -hmm. He's here because of you, which I don't believe. I I do not believe that at all. There's just a lot of like 
fate scenarios that it kind of happened. The the whole movie, like franchise for mm-hmm. these four films has been brought of fate. If you look at it. Yeah. When the teacher is talking to the class at the beginning of 78 about fate and Michael's there looking at Lori and stuff like that, like they were drawn together. Then you fast forward to 2018 where someone else brought them un- like to unwilling to Michael uh-huh. to Lori. Right. Then you get yeah, in this film. The the doctor. The doctor. Mm-hmm. Serene or Sedane yeah. or whatever his fucking name is. Because he wanted he, to see. Yeah, he wanted to see what it was. And that's why I love Corey is because like what that doctor wanted was exactly what Corey's doing. Yeah. Um, but then we get into this film, and again, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the fucking TikToker, but she fucking nailed it on the fucking nose. Once again, Michael wasn't here to get Lori at the end. Michael wanted his fucking Halloween mask yeah. to continue his fucking murder. Because he followed Corey. He followed it, and it happened earlier, too, because Lori was looking at Corey going up with Allison, mm-hmm. and Michael was at the tree yeah. looking at her and went away. Right. It was never about Lori and Michael, but it, this evil versus, honestly, good, mm-hmm. which is Lori. Mm-hmm. And at the end, when Michael dies, they slit his fucking wrist, they slit his fucking throat, and what I absolutely love is when Allison, like... He is not dead, dead enough. enough. Which is what I say all the freaking time for any scary okay. movie <laughs> on <laughs> anything. I'm always like, decapitate him. Like, not double just, tap, triple tap, four tap, five tap. No, nope, all the like all of it. And the <laughs> what they did was so I was poetic. honestly. It was. I was honestly thinking they were going to H2O it and be like, we have to behead him. And when they didn't, mm-hmm. and they do what they do, and if you want to talk about that, well, I'll let you give your thoughts. What they do is practically do a parade mm-hmm. of we tied them to a fucking car. Allison Lori drove them to a junkyard to put him through a fucking metal like machine to like spread his body parts about crush him i mean crush him a he literally yeah. ends up being and like you see it you watch his body meat. being <laughs> meat yeah now are you satisfied <laughs> yeah yeah because i felt like that was such a good closure for the town as right. well like it was their piece i yeah. mean even to the point where the, like the one officer was like this is not how we do things like we don't do this this Ooh. is not okay and, the and other, then the sheriff, who is a part of 18, tonight. and kills and yep. saw how this fucking town acts, it is tonight. But it was. It goes back to where the town was attacking Lori, yep. was having like, oh, I'm going to, because clearly somebody shot those people. Yep. But they wanted to blame Michael. Like, yep. this was the, like, no, we are we are putting an end. Yep. Pun freaking attended. We we're putting an end to Halloween it. Halloween ends. We're putting an end to it. And I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was poetic because it was at the uh, junkyard where Corey worked too. So there was just so many things that I just felt like, yes, that is exactly what needed to happen. Because it ends, quote unquote, Michael. Mm -hmm. However, we've already kind of had this level of learning that it's evil evil is what transcends yeah evil but they needed that to heal the haddonfield we need to kill this body Mm -hmm. to move on yes all right final thoughts any final thoughts for halloween yes you ready okay so (laughs) this is my final thought final thoughts it could be ends and whole. Okay, side I got you. Okay. Just, I got you. We wanted to do like a 15, 20, max 25 minute video. Yeah. We are sitting over 45 minutes. Didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> and here is my thing. This is why I love this movie. Mm-hmm. Because I could continue mm-hmm. on so many things and bring up so many other things. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I mean, I didn't even bring up one of my favorite characters. Lindsay. Lindsay. Kyle, Kyle Richards. Richards. Bravo Love. star. Um, Housewife. Like, I didn't even talk about that. Mm -hmm. And But it was so, it was an easy conversation. Agreed. And I, I honestly, I even think that if I was sitting with somebody that didn't like the movie, mm -hmm. it would still, as long as they were open to having conversation and not just be like, no. No, that yeah. da, 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 da. if they were yeah. how, wanted to, I think that you could easily have a conversation, not to change anybody's mind because your opinion is your opinion. If you don't like it, you don't like it, and that's right. okay. It truly right. is okay. Right. I know some people think otherwise, but mm -hmm. it truly that's mm -hmm. your opinion. You like what you like. You don't. You you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For you sure. can't tell me that this movie does not provoke conversation and mm -hmm. real conversation for a quote unquote horror movie mm -hmm. that has. Michael Myers, that's not real. Right, right. This is a real conversation in the sense about trauma and how it affects people. And I love that. Right. So my final thoughts, I'm so mad you brought that up at the end. Hi. Lindsay, <laughs> um, I know. It's, it's. Yeah. So here are some of my final thoughts. One, I'm just going to go out on a limb. He'll never watch this. Maybe he will. Maybe it'll happen. Um, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, thank you. Yes. Thank you for giving oh, me. Watching. Don't worry. Uh, thanks, guys. Subscribe and like and comment. Uh, <laughs> um, Danny McBride and David Gordon Green, thank you for giving me a trilogy that not only I have absolutely adored with my original. You didn't even know you needed it. I honestly didn't. For a guy that loves Halloween mm -hmm. as what it is, I mean, you're talking to the guy that saw Curse of Michael Myers. It was like, Paul Rudd, you motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks for coming into my world. But like, I'm sitting here like, you gave me one of my favorite yeah. fucking franchises I've seen in years. And, and you said it, it's not fan service. Yep. And I'm not saying fan service is a bad thing. No. But what they did was did give me to something to finish what John Carpenter wanted to do. So, Jason Blum, again, thank you. David Gordon Green, thank you. And where we go from here, it's fine. No matter where it goes, it's fine. This fucking set of films has been one of my favorite things I have been able to see since 2018. What? Because you know I what I love? More okay, you know what okay. I also love about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me feel like because you brought it up earlier where uh Jamie Lee Curtis was like I want out. Right. She was proud to be a part of this. She was proud and I still feel like she is proud. From, yes. Because like kills didn't like get received hearing, well. Like hearing her get upset and I cannot wait for like the the extras to come out because I right. feel like there's going to be quite a bit. Right. Um, I can't wait to watch them. Like I I could listen to Jamie Lee Curtis talk about any of this. Right. Forever. Well, I also want to say this, and this is my final thought. Final thought okay. on this film. And I promise this not entire to interrupt. Saga. Go ahead. You could, you could not, who knows? Can I finish? Uh <laughs> What my favorite thing in the world is everybody feels like they can talk this franchise. Mm -hmm. They feel like they say they are a fan of this franchise. And by the end of the day, and I said it on Instagram the other day, the thing I'm most upset about is when I see this film is a piece of dog shit, in my opinion. Worst of the franchise. My problem with that is in the 80s, we got Halloween 3, which has been received so well later on in life. And because of that, it made me look back at all the Rotten Tomato scores and audience scores from the Halloween franchise. There is only two movies, uh -huh. two movies that are tomatoed in the franchise and that is Halloween 78 in 2018 18. and then the audience score is only two movies that are popcorn worthy and that is 78 in 2018 Makes we sense. are living in a world where and this is what my final thought is that's kind of sad and hopefully it doesn't go this route I don't know by hand 
when part three came out and got love throughout the years, it's because they did find its fan base. Mm-hmm. What I'm scared of is that this film, because of the world we live in with as much content that we get every time, mm-hmm. someone's not going to go back to watch this. Now, I'm very thankful that it's a part of the Halloween franchise, so it does have a chance of someone finding Halloween and being like, I'm going to watch them all. Yeah. But what I'm scared of is that this doesn't get the chance that Halloween 3 did, because let me goddamn tell you right goddamn now, this is one of my favorite Halloween movies. And here's what I will say to that. I do feel like as much as there is a lot of negative out there, which as we learned. There is this, a lot. Of, I got, this is the only movie. Oh yeah. I just want to put this out before you finish. This is the only movie that I have ever been messaged about after I was like, I love this movie. Any other movie that came out has never gotten me a message of being like, well, let me tell you this, that I've gotten this movie is sucked. I've gotten this is my video review. I've got, and they're all negative. This is the only movie that I have ever gotten. And there's a reason to that. Well, this is what I was going to say. This actually leads into it. It goes to show a few things. A, this movie transpires in the sense that Evil is very loud, right? Negativity is very loud. Yeah. Yeah. But there are quite a few <laughs> Evil <people>, screams tonight. <laughs> there are quite a few people that, that do come out and mm-hmm. are laying down facts or reasons as to why certain things worked out the way that they did. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the fact that it lets you know that at least in my opinion, again, I like the movie. Yeah. So everybody has their own opinion. But do this, not this come to worth, us because we love it. But, because but this is if what I'm saying. Did, I will this movie, fight you. this movie is worth fighting trolls over. I will to fight. say it is good. No, we're not saying like fight. Like no, 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 no. Fight. Like, like I'll argue, argue with you. Will you? Yeah, I'll argue with That's you. That's what I'm talking about. Fighting for. I'm oh, fighting yeah, 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 for yeah. this movie. I'll fight. I'll fight. What you. I love about now, this movie were just... is the diversity because yes. I would much rather a diverse film mm-hmm. than a popcorn pleaser or a piece of shit. Now, you can have. Your own feelings are saying, it's not for me, and that's okay. That is 100% okay. Obviously, it's, you're a piece of shit. That's, you're literally going against what I'm saying. Evil screams tonight. Are you good? I'm great. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it, it, again, your opinion it's is Halloween. your opinion. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you gotta subscribe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. We've got. If you want to hear the thoughts of Instagram. the Thrill Me Podcast Network other than us, you can listen to the Mr. Wonderful Show, which pops off on Wednesdays. You can listen to the reviewer, Rob, that drops on Tuesday. And you can listen to the Metal Groove that'll drop on Monday. Thanks for watching. Oh, hey, you, you missed another show. Oh, you're talking about Hannah's podcast? Actually, no, I wasn't. I was talking about <laughs> Improper, Improper Guidance, guidance <laughs> which drops on Thursdays. And let me tell you, I got stories for days in the next couple of weeks. But Hunter's podcast has Brooke. That's me. That's her. <laughs> and you can check that out because mm-hmm. guess what? Halloween. Halloween. Is the season finale, so you're going to want to make sure you check out the season finale on October 21st. How? Really? We're not going to go into November? Like 31st! Not uh, 31st! Oh, okay. Yeah, October oh, 31st. Oh, it's legit up. Oh, I didn't even know that. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers! Thanks, guys! For uh, Halloween. Stay scary. (laughs) My friends. (laughs) Oh!